Hello and welcome to the Restored Nordic Neanderthal channel. I'm going to start us off with a video on skull shapes and then I'll move on to uh, some requests and some repeats of what I've done on the, the previous channel but uh, from different angles so I don't bore my old viewers. Unfortunately I lost access to the previous channel but we'll start again and build right up. I'll put the other channel in the suggested channels so you can have a look and peruse the old videos because there's some good stuff in there. Right, this is uh, skull shapes. So cephalic indices uh, range from dolichocephalic, long and narrow skulls, to brachycephalic, short and wide skulls. Mesocephaly is in the middle. We have a uh, something called cephalic index. Mesocephaly, uh, middle skulls, are from 75 to 80. It's a little sum you do with length and width. Below 75 is dolichocephalic, long skulls. Above 80 is brachycephalic, short skulls. It's also another measurement called facial indices, and uh, that's uh, left to prosopy is long, a tall face, uroprosopy is a short face, a wide face, and uh, mesoprosopic is in the middle. So I'll go through the different types uh, with regards to cephalic indices, and I might mention some of the facial indices as well, but I'm going to focus on the, the skull length and width. Here's a map showing you cephalic index. So this is very broad strokes. Um, a lot of these places have both dolichocephalics and brachycephals. For example, you've got vedoids in India, but most Indians are dolichocephalic. Uh, and then you have a mix of dolichocephalic nordids and uh, brachycephalic uh, strains like Barabi in Scandinavia. And you've got a lot of mesocephals. Uh, Celtic Nordids and things in Britain. So, uh, and then Iberia is here shown as Dolichocephal, but the next map shows it as Mesocephal because it's on the borderline there. Uh, as you can see, Central Europe is more brachycephalic, they've got shorter skulls, and I'll come on to that with some of the types now. Africa, uh, Australia, Arabia all tend to have long skulls. Here's the map of Europe, and as you can see, Scandinavia, Britain, and North Germany are mesocephal, with Central Europe being more brachycephal. Uh, Iberia here is also mesocephal, but was shown as dolichocephalic on the last map. Um, it's Mediterranean. So Mediterraneans and Nordics have long skulls. Other types like Alpines and Dinarids have short skulls, or very short skulls. On to some examples. Here's a corded Nordid. This is the original type of Nordid, and original types of Nordids were strictly dolichocephalic or long skulls. Most modern Nordids are mesocephalic because of various admixtures. Uh, so you'll find that with the Celtic Nordid type in Britain, especially. Uh, this is an Atlanto Mediterranean from Spain. He's actually a Basque. The Basques have a specialized type called the Basket, which is quite short skulled quite wide skulled but this guy uh, is is longer skulled um, and so he's a good example of the Iberian type. This is a Yemeni Arab he's got a classical Mediterranean skull long skulled narrow skulled onto Somali this is the Negro periphery of the um, Mediterranean race and both Mediterraneans and Negroids have long skulls uh, and you can see this guy. This guy has a Mediterranean skull. It's a Somali. On to uh, a skull which I presume is mesocephal, maybe dolichocephal. Brun, this is Brun. Brun are mesodolichocephal, so they range from mid medium skulls to long skulls. They have long skulls as a rule, but they also have quite wide skulls, and that makes the measurement wider. This is a robust Paleolithic type. Another robust Paleolithic type, uh, but one that's brachycephalic is the Barabi. This is the Barabi. They have long heads, but they have very wide heads. So they're brachycephal. Um, they tend to be low brachycephal on account of their head length. Onto some hyper-brachycephalic uh, hyper types. So Armenid, the classic type of Armenians and Jews. And... Uh, 
I mean it is similar to the next type, Denaric, but it has a shorter face. It's still got a uh, prominent nasal apparatus and a, a very short skull. Um, Denaric, here the next one, is found in certain parts of the Balkans. It's found in admixture at high levels in Britain. Uh, it's also hyperbrachycephalic, but it's, it's tall-faced. French Alpinid here, and the Alpinid is the reason for much of that brachycephaly you see in Central Europe. It's a very common type, and it's common in a mixture in other places. It's common in France, Southern Germany, other parts of uh, the Balkans, common in a mixture in Britain, and common in a mixture in Eastern Europe as well. So it tends to be low brachycephal because it's wide-headed, but it's also got a medium-length uh, skull. Um, Sometimes it's very short skulled and then tends towards hyperbrachycephaly, but hyperbrachycephaly tends to be the, the Armenid, the Dinarid. Here's an East Baltid, here's another hyperbrachycephalic type. This tends to be found in North and Eastern uh, Finland. And here's a totally different map. This is uh, skull size. So there's some correlations here, but there's you, you have to look at the people group because Asians have very large skulls, but they have brachycephal skulls. Uh, East Asians, Chinese for example, um, whereas in Europe you have a pattern where the Nordic influenced dolichocephals in the northwest have larger skulls than the brachycephalic Central Europeans. And you've got a few other interesting points about the map. Rwanda Burundi has very small skulls, even for Africa, and Africa has small skulls in general. Um, and then you see um, in India, there's a pattern of north to south with the largest skulls in the north. Uh, again, Australia has very small skulls. I hope you enjoyed that and I uh, hope it was useful for you. Do uh, place your requests in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Thanks.